أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى أهله وأصحابه أجمعين. once more السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. the topic of discussion is about compatibility. so we title it compatible or comfortable. compatible or comfortable. For those who are yet to marry, they need to consider what is compatibility. For those who are married, what is it about compatibility? Would you rather be compatible or you would prefer to be comfortable in your marriage? Which one is which? How do we know which one? How do we know which one is not? For many people who have been married for many years, after those so many years, all of the things about compatibility they saw in one another, they begin to wane off, they begin to fade off. And sometimes compatibility that became something that led to the wedlock will suddenly transform and become padlock. So from wedlock, it became padlock. Where are all of these sparks, all of these sweetness, all of the romance, all of the happiness that people experience when they newly got married. Why is it that after some years, all of those sweetness begin to disappear gradually? And in some instances, it disappears completely and then they wonder, why did I even marry this person? And they look at each other and they say, look, we have nothing in common. You must have heard of that before. Husband and wife have been married for like 15 years. They will say, we have nothing in common. Why didn't they think of that before they got married? Could it be because people have different ways of getting married? Some marriages are arranged. Some, they met each other. Some, some people recommended them for each other. Some, they loved each other. Some, they never loved each other. Some, they had what they call chemistry. Some, they didn't have anything. Some, they truly loved each other. Some, they didn't love each other. Could it also be because of the hard times? Or could it be because people have wrong idea about compatibility? Could it also be because people don't really know who they are and they don't really know what they want? Many people have gotten married before they realize that it is not what they actually wanted. And some married reluctantly only for them to realize that, ah, where has this person been all my life? So living in a society that satisfies material wants now and then, everything is about materialism, materialism, materialism. People think the more materials they have, the more they are going to be accepted in the society. Some people even think the more material things they have, the more respect they will get in the society. Some people even think the more money they have, the more they will be honored. They won't, nobody will give you chief stances title if you don't have money, for example. With all that in people's mind, there's something that people are missing out. They need some meaning to their lives. What is the meaning of this marriage itself in the first place? This, my own marriage, what is it about it? Some people are very rich. But being rich is not the guarantee for a happy marriage. And some people are very poor. Being poor doesn't mean they will not have a happiness. They will not have happiness in their marriages. For these few years we have spent on earth, we have seen a lot of that. Something that people really miss and they are struggling to get is love and acceptance. To be accepted for who you are, to be accepted as you are, to be honored as you are and to be loved as you are. But this love that we say, everybody looks for it. People have problems finding it. When some people find it, they don't recognize it. Some people recognize it, they don't know how to hold on to it. And some people have problem letting go of it. It is coming, 
it brings happiness. Sometimes it will come, it will bring sadness. Sometimes it will come, it will bring sadness. Sometimes it will go, it will also bring sadness. And it is about the biggest drama in our private lives. The biggest and the center stage of our lives. The most, the, the most difficult to explain of all human emotions. There's no drug, there's no medicine that cures things the way love does. It is a very wonderful drug. When you feel it, you know that you really feel it. Even if you cannot explain it, you will see that it is the only thing that can suspend time and makes time to seem to stand still. It will make the whole world to be as if it's only you and the person you love that exists. It feeds you more than any nourishment. It quenches your thirst more than any soft drink or any cold drink. You feel full in the presence of love. You are never hungry. You are never sad. You are never bored. You are never lonely in the presence of love. True love is not ordinary. It's the most sublime of all human emotions. It is divine somehow. You cannot force a flower to open up, to bloom. You can't force love to be. You can't grab love. You can't steal love. You can't sell it. And you can't buy it. You can't even fake it. After a while, it will show that this is not love. There's nothing like true love or false love. Love is love. If it is not love, it is not love. And because it is Allah that ordains it, it is divine. Allah says, Waja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma. That this love is one that puts it in place. And of course, we all want someone to share our laughter, to be a best friend, to be a lover. Someone who will not only listen to your doubts, and celebrate your triumphs, but somebody who will jump at you at any time and say, oh yeah, let's go out and enjoy ourselves. Or, oh yeah, let's go inside and enjoy ourselves. We want to be one half of a couple whose personal characteristics so closely mesh, so much so that after a while, when two people love each other, they begin to resemble one another. Such assurance of somebody to be by our sides is not only possible through love but also through compatibility there's a very critical aspect of love that compatibility has something to do with but it's not everything most people love people with whom they are not even compatible at all so love is superior to the concept of compatibility by all standards. So how can we gain insights into the qualities that's going to let us understand what love is and how compatibility or comfortability works with love? We have heard and we have seen, we have observed from researchers to matchmakers, we have watched so many couples draw together and we have also watched them pull apart. Each of them suggests that there's something that is wrong about the way they love each other. Maybe they focused on compatibility, but compatibility is not everything about love. They say another one that is similar to compatibility, they call it chemistry. Chemistry is when you see somebody instantaneously, the person becomes so likable. You almost fall in love immediately with that person. They say they have chemistry. Something clicks about them. Something works with them. Something gels with them. Somebody cracks jokes, another person laughs. Something connects them. They say they have chemistry. We can have chemistry with people. We can have chemistry with things. We can have chemistry with situations. But this chemistry is not, is not all there is to guarantee love. And neither is compatibility all there is that guarantees love. You know what? A person may say they are compatible now. If you observe very well, there will be 1,358 other people with whom you are compatible. 
how can you determine which one is most compatible? I want to tell you a lot of stories today concerning knowing yourself and knowing the reason why somebody seems compatible and why another person seems not compatible. There's a history of compatibility in the natural things that Allah has created. There's a theory of the four elements that we have in existence. Ibn Turab, the son of earth, the creature from earth. And who is that? That is Adam. Now, it's the combination of, of water and air and fire that Allah made Adam from the earth. How many things have I mentioned now? Four things. Water, uh -huh. fire, uh -huh. air, and which one? An earth. The sand, the turab. So some scholars now put it together. They mention these four as some of the elements that you see exist in every child of Adam. You see a trace of these four elements in them. When Adam, Allah Akbar, do you notice that Allah made Adam from the clay itself? It's an, a combination of the sand and the water mixed together. It becomes mud. It's called teen in Arabic. Teen. You created him from teen. Combination of sand and water becomes clay. And when you make clay, if you want to make a pot, if you use clay to mold it, if you want the pot to last, where will you keep the pot? In the fire. You fire it. By the time you fire it, it becomes terracotta. It can hold water. It can hold almost anything. After it has gone through the fire. So, before any child of Adam can even be made in the first place, that water is needed. That's the water that is deposited in the mother that's represented by the earth. And then, from one heat to the other, for those of you who have uh, uh, been present where a baby is born, in fact, you women who have given birth to babies, I, I'm sure you realize that it was not a cold water that comes out of you. Very hot. Hot like... Some nurses will almost drop your baby because it is so hot as it is coming out. And as the baby comes out, that's why the baby will be shivering because the way it was coming from was very hot. That heat was needed to fire him so that it can become done, so to speak. If the place was not hot, his skin will be tearing to pieces as we are holding it. Allah Akbar. And so because of that, Allah now said, you see, Iblis, remember we were talking about jeans the other time, they were created from fire and air. Fire and air mixed together becomes the genes. And because they are weaker than Adam, Allah said, Inna kaida shaitan kana do'ifa. In, indeed, the shaitan and his people, they are very weak. But when Allah was talking to um, women, Allah says, Inna kaida kunna azim. Indeed, your own wiles are very strong. Meaning that because of the composition of how I made you, a combination of the earth and water, you are stronger than a combination of fire and air. Now, in, in the natural things that Allah has created, they all work hand in hand. Let's take, for example, now a tree. If you plant a seed in the earth, the seed will germinate, right? With the assistance of what? With the assistance of sunlight and water sunlight and water help the seed to absorb some heat in the ground and with that heat it begins to grow as it grows things are included in it part of what is included is it the tree itself has water in it if it has become a full tree now it has water in it right it also survives on oxygen and carbon dioxide right if it, takes in, it takes in carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. These are properties of the air. And then the sunlight makes it to be able to fruit or to release the flowers or to make the chlorophylls and the, every other thing that it needs from the sun. A combination of the heat and the light. Now, if at the end of the day we cut that tree 
we cut it from the mother earth, what's going to happen? It's going to die. And when the tree dies, what else is going to happen to it? If we set the, the tree, we set it on fire. If we burn it, or we use it as firewood, what happens? All of the fire properties that it has taken from the sun will begin to be released. And so we say this tree, or this stick, or this firewood is burning. Meaning that it is giving up the ghost, releasing the energy of the heat from the sun it had absorbed and stored. After it had given out all of that, what remains? Ashes. And ashes is akin going back to the earth. And the fire itself will not burn unless the properties of the air is present. It will not be combustible, like the scientists will say. No fire will burn if there is no air. So from the tree that comes out, you see all the other elements present in that tree. For human beings that have been created, you get to see all the elements in us, the way you see it in Adam. So these scholars of this theory, they now explain that some people have more of the behaviors of the earth in them than the behavior of the fire that is part of them. Some people have more of the behavior of the water in them than in that of the air. As for Iblis and the jinns, they are predominantly 100% having to do with the air and the fire. And the child of Adam has much more to do with the properties of the earth and water. Now when they now mix up to form a human being, you see all sorts of attitudes in a human behavior. They explain, for example, for those who behave like um, the earth, who have taken more of the, um, of, of the ways of thinking, of the ways, or the ways of behavior of the mother earth itself, you see certain qualities in them. Some are positive, some are negative. Part of their positive qualities is that they are very consistent. They are very consistent. They like stability. People will have, have too much earth in them. They like to be stable. They cannot thrive. They cannot survive in an environment that is not stable. And that's why the earth will stay where You can't carry the earth from one place to another. If the earth is not stable, no fruit can grow from it. If you keep cutting it and you keep scraping, you keep packing the sand and throwing, nothing will grow in it. But the earth likes to be stable, likes to be where it is for it to function well. They also have a lot of things they can bottle up. They can swallow anything. All sorts of shit, they can take it. Forgive me for saying that. People who behave like the earth, you can insult them, you can pour things on them, you can trample on them. They will not talk. They will not complain. And so they swallow anything. Those are some of their good qualities. They are very perseverant. They like to stay behind the scene. They don't like to be seen as the ones doing things. They were there. The, the fruit will grow, the tree will grow, people will eat the fruit and they will forget the earth itself. Nobody ever eats fruit and say thank you earth for bringing the fruit. fruit. And people will pluck the fruit and take it far away. They will not remember the point where they took it from. The earth can be very, very stable and very motherly, very nurturing. Hmm. But you know the opposite, the other side of the earth, the negative thing about the earth. Don't get the earth angry. Oh. The earth can eat anything, can swallow anything. But the day you get it angry, it will destroy everything, including itself. Have you heard of volcano before? Volcanic eruption. What comes out of, from volcano? Fire. Fire and brimstone. This is somebody who doesn't get angry. Because they don't get angry easily and every time, they don't know how to do little anger. When they want to scatter, they will scatter everything. When they want to destroy, they will destroy everything. A mother that nurtures a child, when the child gets to, to an extent, if the mother curses that child, the curse will work, work on that child. In fact, you remember the prophet said even paradise. Al Jannatu Tahta Kudamul Umaat. Paradise lies at the feet of the mothers. Don't joke with mothers. So many of them have this earth quality in them. They are very resilient. They don't look for trouble. 
they are very careful, they are very firm, they are very reliable, they are very respectable, they like to walk behind the scene. The people who behave like the earth in terms of their professions are the teachers. The teachers are the people behind the scene, shaping and forming the life of individuals. But when they become presidents, they become governors, they become ministers, they don't remember these, these teachers anymore. And you don't see any teacher come out and say, I, I used to be the teacher of social and so person. You just see a child doing well, a child doing fine. They may thank the parents, but they don't thank the teachers. Those were the ones who held our hands on these slates and said, this is how to write A, this is how to write B, this is how to write Alif, this is how to write Baal. But you see them, they walk in the background. Now, when you see somebody whose life is like that, they have advantages. Part of their disadvantage is that they can be very lazy sometimes. They can be very indifferent sometimes. Indifference. That sometimes they don't talk when they need to talk. When they have made you to be who you want to be, they will just leave you alone. You understand what I mean by that? It's partly positive, partly negative. They will leave you alone to be who you want to be. They are indifferent to you. After they have trained you, you have left their classroom, they will leave you alone to exist in your own life. And sometimes they can be very cumbersome. Sometimes they can um, be very timid sometimes. If a woman is of this earth uh, situation, once you enter into her house, you will know this, uh, this is an earth person. How does the earth house look like? Not only for women, also for men. You know what it looks like? It looks very simple, number one. Sometimes it can be very dirty, number two. Number three, they keep all sorts of things. Sometimes they clutter a lot. They keep things a lot. You remember those old bottles? <laughs> you find them in their houses. Why? They don't know how to throw things away. They will say, this one is useful, that one is useful, this one is useful, that one is useful. That's how they will pack their house with all, all sorts of things they don't even need. So, people who are close to the earth, they are old school most of the time. They deal more with utility than with style. They say, no, it's okay like this. And the place they put their bed for the past 15 years, that's the same spot you meet the bed. In fact, if possible, the, the bed should start growing now because it has stayed on one spot for too long. It's wooden bed they will use. And some of them are not using wooden bed. They still use the iron bed. We use those days. And they don't believe in style. They just put themselves together and they are okay, good to go. Mothers, us, they are down to us and that's how they are. If you enter a house that they have more of these elements in their homes, you see so many pictures they put on the wall. Pictures of um, their first baby, their first child, that, that is now a professor in uh, A.B. Uzaria, when he was a baby, the way he did like this <laughs> to the camera, you see, still see there in there, when, if it gets broken, they will change the glass, they will put another frame, they will change the glass, in fact, it will remain like that, you see those olden day frames, then you see the photograph of his great-grandfathers, and his great-grandmother too, the way they put a ring like this, and sat down like this. Maybe the photograph has said a bird was going to fly, then you see them do like that. <laughs> Those are people. When you enter a person's house, you will know quickly that this one has earth, plenty of earth element in them. But their mothers, even if he's a man, he's like a mother. A man that doesn't say anything wrong in bathing his children in the morning, taking care of them to go to school, that man has a lot of earth in him. They are very caring, very nurturing. They attract people to themselves. People come to benefit from them. People come to keep them company. But people don't remember them. When they do good to people, many people don't come back to pay back. Sometimes they pay them with evil. Sometimes they pay them with indifference. Sometimes they will look at them as if, uh, hey, and so what? Because they don't even talk about it. They do countless of those things. They don't remember how many they have done. Those are the people with so much earth in their system. Do you understand the earth person now? I will explain another person to you. Then you will now tell me whether that one is compatible with any other one. A man with that earth situation 
you would think it should be compatible with a woman with that same earth situation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But let me tell you about the fire now. Fire, fire. <laughs> fire. What happens to the fire person? Well, the fire person is nice. The fire person is warm. The fire person is vigorous, has zeal, has enthusiasm, has courage, is very decisive, is very creative, is very daring. The fire person is not somebody you can keep in the background. He will not stay in the background. Just the same way you cannot keep fire under your bed without it exposing itself. If you keep fire under your bed, even if you don't see the fire, you see the smoke at least. A fire person likes to be seen. A fire person likes to be heard. A fire person likes to move. They may have their bases, they have their sources, but they like to raise their necks up. A fire person doesn't keep quiet. A fire person wants to be heard by all means. They make others to be happy. They cheer people up. It's never a dull moment for a fire person. Of course, they get something dull means something dark, isn't it? Wherever a fire person is, the place is never dull. They have a portable sunlight they carry with them anywhere they go to. Anywhere they go to, even by virtue of their smiles, they have a way of, they may be here, but they will send the ray of their light through into your chest. It will go into your heart and you become brightened up like them. They can speak one or two words and you forget you are ever sad. The earth can become melancholic, can have mood problem, but the fire person doesn't have mood problem. Have you ever seen where darkness quenches fire? Darkness can never quench fire. Rather, it is fire that would dispel darkness. Now, the fire carries two things with it. It carries the nar and the nur. Nar and nur. Nar is fire, nur is light. If you want something to be enlightened, if you want someone to throw light into something, bring the fire person. They are very good at throwing light into things. That's one thing about them. They don't like secrets. If you keep any secret in them, they will burn it and they will expose the smoke. If you don't see the smoke, you will perceive that something, something, something is burning here. You will know something is burning. That is the fire personality. The fire person is a very interesting person. But let me tell you, there is the opposite side. The negative side of the fire person. Do you know what it is? <laughs> when they get angry. They will burn things and they will burn themselves. They will destroy things and they will destroy... When fire burns and burns and after a while it will burn out itself. Fire doesn't know when to stop. You can set a small place on fire now. Fire doesn't know that it is okay. It doesn't hear it's enough. If the fire person is angry, it is very difficult to calm them down. If you don't put them under control, they are going to be the worst enemy. Things you have gathered for 20 years, they will spoil it in 20 minutes. Because that is their nature. You know part of how they spoil it? They talk too much. They discuss too much. They don't have secrets. And they believe that everybody should be happy like them. Because they talk too much, they make enemies. Because they are always happy, people are envious of them. And because they don't know when to stop, they don't know that, ah, don't rejoice too much in the presence of these people. They don't know that you should keep quiet. Because of that one, envy will kill them. Their brightness. When people see that they cannot remove their brightness, just like you cannot remove the brightness of the sun, you cannot remove the brightness of the lantern, what do you do? You remove the source of the fire and all the brightness would disappear. You cannot hold the brightness or the fire person, but you can remove the source. When Musa Ali Salatu Wasalam said to his people, he said, In near Anas to Naran, I saw fire in the distance. Let me go there and at least bring light from there so that we can see where through we are going or warm ourselves with it. That's Nar and Nur combined. 
And when Musa goes there, Allah says, Amburi kaman finari wa man hawla. Let al of Allah be upon this one that is inside this fire and the person that's around it. In other words, the fire person has an aura that attracts people. The way the lantern attracts insects. The way the bulbs attract insects. The light person, the fire person attracts people to themselves. But if you touch them, they will burn you. And they have no apology for doing that. If the earth person wants to marry the fire person, will they be compatible? Not much. But let me tell you somebody that may likely be compatible with either of them. Should I tell you? Yes, let me tell you the water. The water. Allah Akbar. Let me tell you the good side of water. Water is where we are all created from. The most of our being is water. A larger percentage of our existence is water. If you add the blood to the water in our system, the things that remain are very small. In fact, the whole of our brain is like cucumber. It is a higher percentage of liquid than solid. The brain, the intestine, the chest, everything that it has, all of our bodies, the blood that flows through our veins, and the water that goes around our system. The percentage of the water in us is almost as if we are 70% water and only 30% flesh. That's the soil. And that's why when the person dies, I told you the other time, the person will swell up, the water will separate from the flesh because it was created from both water and sand to make clay and to become blood and flesh. So we have more of the water than the sand in our system. So the water element in us, when it comes to being, a water person becomes more like a philosopher. He can be very stable in the surface, but very violent under. Or he can be very violent in the surface, but very stable under. You can see the sea moving up and down, turning and surfing. But underneath it, the fish are very calm and comfortable. They move around. They don't even feel all of those turbulence on top of the water. That is the water person for you. You can never guess right what is going on in their minds. They are so much like philosophers. They keep secrets. They may not talk, but they are boiling inside. And if you think that they are boiling their suffering, they have some comfort somewhere. They can negotiate almost anything because they are philosophers. If they are going straight like this and there's a big rock on the way, what do they do? They will dodge it. They move like this. They are the chiefs of diplomacy. You never can guess right with them. But you know, they can be very mild. They can be very trusting in nature. They can be very devoted. They can be very merciful. They can be very, very forgiving. They like forgiveness a lot. No matter how dirty something you bring to them is, they will wash it clean as if nothing happens. And you see, they are also very modest. They are compassionate. They, are, they have pliancy. That means they can flow easily. They can also be meditative. They can keep quiet for a long time. Meditating and thinking and thinking and thinking. They are more like philosophers. They internalize things a lot. If you say something to them, Instead of them to treat it on the surface, it will go deep down into them. Just like when you throw a stone into the river. What's going to happen? You can see it will splash, whoop, like that. But where's the stone? It will not give you the stone back. It will internalize it. It will bring it down and examine what is it that you have thrown into me. But if you throw rubbish into it, it will keep taking it, it will keep taking it, even if it is 50 years. It will take revenge on you. 50 years. The water people, they can forgive you, but they don't forget. Any stone you throw into the river, if it is poison you throw inside or you urinate in the river, even if it is 50 years time, you will drink it back. Yes. Even in fact, it may not reach 50 years. That same water you, you point that you, you defecate or urinate inside it. It will just call on the friend, the son. Son, 
bring this thing up, come and take it off me. The sun will take it up by evaporation. It will, press, it will rain. The rain will fall back on your head, your urine. The day it will... <laughs> The day the rain will fall, you will not, you will not hold your umbrella that day. <laughs> Subhanallah. It's funny, isn't it? That's how the water people behave. So people will have that um, attitude of water in them. They can forgive you, but they will not forget. They will give you back one day. If we, if we pollute the, the, the water environment, what's going to happen? We are going to have acid rain someday. Yes, we are going to have acid rain. It will bring it back. Bani Adam, you say you don't hear what? If you, if you pollute me, I'm going to give it back to you. It is what we pour in the river that the, the sky will take up and it will rain it back on our head. And we will drink it. Yes, we will drink it and all sorts of things will happen to us as a result of that. That is the water person. But is there anything negative about Yes, these are the negative things we have been talking about. But the positive thing about them is that they are the source of life. You cannot do without philosophers. You cannot do without thinkers. They are the ones who can think very well. While others are busy moving about, they, you see them go like this, they go like that. They flow like this, they flow like that. They think, they reflect, they sustain life, and they plan ahead. And they are very patient. Very, very patient. As you see them, they can be there like a river. They can remain where they are. They respect themselves a lot. If they're in form of river, everybody will go to them and fetch from them. But if they become flood, they show no mercy. They will sweep everything and everyone that comes on their path. Now, let me tell you, these water people now, between water and fire and water and earth, which of them is more compatible? Water and earth more compatible what of water and fire <laughs> it is whoever comes first that will kill the other hmm. let me tell you the first one then we begin to match them let's match make them the the first one is the element of air all of these things i'm telling you are theories you may disagree with what i'm saying the element of air are the ones that are, they have very good qualities of course they are very vigilant they have carefree, in fact, they, they have carefree attitude to things, right? They don't take things to heart. If you offend them now, by the time breeze blows, they've forgotten. And you see them, they are very kind-hearted. The air people, they are very kind-hearted. In fact, you remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu about the Prophet during the last 10 days of Ramadan. What does he used to do? The Sahaba said the Prophet used to spend... I think it's Aisha that related the hadith. He used to spend as quickly as the wind, as the breeze. So it was, his, his generosity was compared to the way the wind blows. The wind blows everyone. Whether you are a good person or a bad person, it doesn't care. It will give you the benevolence. It will spend on you. It is very kind. It is very trusting. It, is, it has clarity. It has lightness. The, the air people, they don't bottle things up. In fact, they are like the opposite of the earth people. The earth people can bottle things up, carry a lot of weight. Air doesn't carry weight too. If you are too heavy, it will just drop you. Bah, you meet yourself on the ground. If you bring too much wahala, it will blow it away and it will make light of it. And so they also have that feeling of independence. They just want to be free to move, to do things. People like that, you see the kind of profession they like. They like professions where they can move around, where they can do things. You can't tie them down. If a woman is like the heir, she can't stay in one place. She'll go to Biki, she'll go to wedding, she'll go to Suna, she'll go to Coffin, she'll go to burial. There's nothing she'll not go to. She doesn't stay in one place. You can't make an heir woman to stay in one place. She likes to travel. Something she can get in, in Wuse here until she gets to Dubai or she will not buy. Something you can get in, uh, uh, in Ojoba, she'll go to China to go and get it. Why? Because she's the air person. She's also very dexterous. Anything she does, she does it perfectly. She does it well. And she's very optimistic. She's full of hope. The air person never gives up. And that's why it's very difficult for you to 
harness them to gather them in one place. They always have rooms to escape. You can't lock the air person up in the house unless you're a organizer. <laughs> it's only a organizer that can lock the air up in the tire, isn't it? You have to do a lot of wahala to do that one. You lock them up there. They can remain there, but they won't stay there forever. One day, they will escape. Why? Because they are very optimistic. They don't give up. They don't give up and they don't lose hope. No matter how much you bottle them up in the tire, either in tube or tubeless, the moment there's one small hole like this, they will take advantage of it and you see them, they will not forget that they needed to escape. It's only the earth that can forget. The earth, when it solidifies in one place, will remain there. Even when you remove the things, the mold that gather it together, it will still remain there. It won't go. Ah, ask women, if you lock them up in the house, they will stay. If you open the door, they will stay. If you ask them to escape, they will stay. If you imprison them, they will stay. It is where you put them that they will stay. Where they want to stay, that's where they will stay. If you tell them to go, they will still stay. They are the ones who like to count years. I've been married for how many years? <laughs> You know, they like stability. They don't change marriage. If it's a man, that's that the earth person. If you say D like this, he doesn't know anything about divorce. He thinks he's going to die if he should divorce. Oh, oh, he thinks his, the world of his world is upside down if he should divorce. He would rather suffer from the hands of the wife than to divorce. As for the woman, even if the man is killing her like this, she will still stay. Oh, 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 he's killing me. I live now. Oh, 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 my children are. <laughs> Look at the person. <laughs> Look at the person that says she's suffering, she wants to die. Okay, go now. You say, oh, My children, my children. <laughs> okay, your husband says you should go. Pack your thing and go. The husband will pack her loose and throw it outside. Like, Boah. Say, Oh, oh, oh. And hey, what? My marriage, my marriage. <laughs> Allah, Hakbar. Go and try that with the fire woman. Or more, she will burn you up. Uh, you want me to go? I, I've gone, Dama. <laughs> or you want to try with the air? This is the air we are talking about. You want to try that with air? You tell air to go. <laughs> Be, before you even tell her to go, she, she has gone far. She don't. Te, te, she don't. If you imprison her, she can endure. That's what I'm saying. She can be very enduring. She can be very patient, but she's very hopeful. If you mess up with the air, the air will go. Yes, it will go. And it is whatever thing you give it that it will give to you. If you put perfume in the air, you will smell what is nice. If you put tusa, you will smell what is bad. That's what, is that not what is called karika chop? Karika chop is what you see that you eat. Come see, come sir. What you put, what, what you saw, what to. I'm just making it up. I don't know what the meaning of come see, come sir. But maybe it sounds like it's what you reap that you sow, right? Now? Like this, like that. Uh -huh. if whatever you give to the air, that's what you get back. If the air is very, very light, if the air is very happy, you, that's within the air, you will be happy. They mirror what their husbands do to them. And they mirror what their wives do to them. It's what you bring that you get. Allah Akbar. The only disadvantage you get with the air is uh, inconstancy. They are not constant. If they are here now, they are there tomorrow. You can't meet them where you left them. Sure, you know, you remember that the, the fire has a source. You understand? The fire has a source. But where is the source of the air? It doesn't like to be tied down. So it will not even allow you to tie it down in the first place. They can be committed but on their own terms. Not on your own terms. If they stay, they stay because they want to stay, not because you make them to stay. If they comply, not because you make them to comply, it's because they want to comply. And they are very prodigal. They can do anyhow now, go away, then they come back again. They blow up and down as they want. They are very free people. Which of these four people can actually marry the other one? Okay, suggest to me now, who can the heir marry? Ma 
there, there is positive and there is negative. Let's look at the positive first. Positively, are you with me now? Positively, the air can marry the water, right? Because without the air, the water will not move. It's the air that's in the sea that makes us to see the turfs, that makes us to see the curves, that makes us to see the surfs, right? It's the air with the sea that makes whatever the sea is harboring to be alive. You know, they also need oxygen down there. And the air mixes with the water. What is H2O? What is the H part of it? Uh-huh. What's the O part of it? Thank you. You can see you can't have water without the air. They go hand in hand. The two of them. If the wife say, hmm, the husband will say, hmm, hmm. <laughs> two caught four. See, they are just perfect. You see, if it were fire, if it were fire, when one of them say, hmm, the wife say, what happened? What did I do? Did I offend you? Somebody did something. Did I say something? What is wrong? What is happening? What should I do? What did I do? Should I die? Should I sleep? Should I wait? Should I eat? That's the fire person. A fire person doesn't know where to keep secret. It's the earth and the water that can keep malice for days. The fire person doesn't keep malice. So if you bring fire, they will bring fire. You will quarrel, we settle it, and that's all. When people come, they thought our house is burned, they just see smoke. He said, no, quarrel has finished now. Who, who told you we are? Okay, we, oh, the one we were fighting, which one are you referring to yesterday? Because you fought about three times yesterday. <laughs> because we fought three times yesterday, which one of the quarrels are you referring to? But the earth person, ah, uh, ah, uh, the earth person, a quarrel of 20 years, it is still in their head, though. You think they have forgotten? Ah, 20 years they will bring it up. One day. It's like when you plant something now. Whatever thing you bury on the ground. If it's 20 years, they will bring it up again. The earth person, may Allah save us. If somebody that's like air, might person that's like water. Right? You know the air, no source. But the water has a source. So they can complement each other. They can help one another. In fact, in some instances, when what we call water vapor, is actually a combination of the air and the water, right? And when the water wants to express itself sometimes, it needs the air to express itself. If there's so much heat, you will see that the air will help the water to drive off the heat in form of the vapor. That's a positive union between them. Then what of the air and the fire? They can also work, right? Okay, because without the air, the fire will not burn. And if it gets too excessive, the air can put out fire. If it works positively, it can make the fire to burn more. If it works post- negatively, it can make the fire to be quenched. So if you want to quench a kindled uh, candle, you just blow it like that and that's it. It's gone. But if you want to cook fire, you women that use uh, firewood, if you want it to burn well, what do you do? You still blow it. Yeah, you still blow air into it. So it, is, it can be positive, it can be negative, depending on how you handle it. Now, which one is also positive amongst them? The earth. Who can the earth marry? The earth can marry anyone. They won't complain. If you bring fire, they will become hot. During the daytime, they can get very hot. When the night falls, they have a way of cooling off themselves. And if you make it to be too much like that, you will dry it up and everything. What is very valuable to it, it will push it down. So that your heat, I mean your, your direct fire cannot burn it. And sometimes before the earth can be productive, it also needs heat for it to be productive. Do you understand what I mean now? All right. Then uh, which other one? What is the negative side of uh, water and fire? If water marries fire. Water can quench the fire. Is there any way the water can help the fire? Hmm. It's difficult, is it? It's very difficult. So, (laughs) when the water person marries the fire person, it's not a very easy 
um, fight between them. It's not a very easy way to say, let's adapt. Adaptations are very difficult for them. That type of compatibility you get as it be. They have to work really hard. Do you remember their natures? Do you remember their nature? The water is a philosopher. The fire is a show-off person. Right? So sometimes it's a mix of introvert and an extrovert. Somebody who likes to be seen and somebody who well doesn't really like to be seen per se, but is always around, very slow moving sometimes, very calm and collected. You never see fire being slow unless it is just a candle. If the fire is giving you nar, if it's giving you light, you can enjoy the fire as much as you want. The fire can also give certain elements of heat. You are going to enjoy it in warming up yourself, in boiling your, up your substance, in cooking up your things. But don't get the fire person annoyed. Another thing can happen. Now, this compatibility we are talking about now. Some people have a combination of this and this and this. Right? Have you thought of which one is your own? You are asked, right? Can nature change? It can be adapted. It can be positive. It can also be negative. You cannot say fire is negative. Fire, without fire, we can't cook most of the things we eat. Right? So fire can be very, very positive. The nature may not change, but it can be adapted to suit certain situations as it is. But whichever one you are, you know the one that's more dominant. We all have all of these things, too, but some are more dominant than the other. Even if you enter our houses, our houses carry their own stain of this element that we have. I've told you the house of, of the earth person. What was the house of the fire person? What does it look like? Flashy. Everything is flashy. Thank you, my sister. Everything is flashy. Everything is flamboyant. They want you to see their new plasma TV. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> they want you to see their new car. The earth person can use one that soon for 15 years. He will say, ah, that 504, it was my father's father that used it and passed it to my father. And we have changed the engine about 15 times. And you see, they still love that car. They will still be rubbing, uh, cleaning the car and rubbing powder on it. But for the fire person, you just do a look at this car and say, ah, this car I've used it for about six months too, or more. There's another car I saw today. Before you know it, she will just pawn it, sell it and buy another one. Say, so what of the car of the other time? Ah, that one has gone, Titi. That's the fire person. You see, when the earth person marries the fire person, there will be conflict too. Plenty conflict. Because all of these uh, things that the earth person will be keeping and keeping, and keeping which, which one is this one? Let's change it, Jock. <laughs> how, how can we be using the same bed sheet for five years? But the earth person will say, ah, this bed sheet, it touches very thick, oh. It's original. They are the ones who look for original things. <laughs> Somebody wants to buy a comb looking for original comb. What? Which one is original? And comb? Buy a comb. If you break, buy another one. But you see, they will keep one shoe for five years. Ah, this shoe lasts very long. They are the ones who look for shoes that can last very long. They ask people, right? And the shoes that have caught that they cannot wear again, they still keep it in the house. Go and check your houses now, all of you that are asking. <laughs> You have shoes that cannot size you again. You will not dash it out and you will not throw it away. If your husband gets angry, pack it and throw it away, you go and bring it back inside. Some of you will go to the dustbin and be crying, ah, oh, ah, oh, my bag, my bag, they throw my bag. Which bag? The bag that your grandmother used during those days. You still bring it and say, ah, oh, but the leather is still very okay. Okay, they will use to make shoe for me. Abba, <laughs> abba, madam. <laughs> But you are going to be very unlucky if your husband is the earth person and you are fire. You are going to be very unlucky. Sometimes they look like anti progress. Yes, they look like anti progress. You see, men who are earth, eh, you can keep one job for 45 years, one job like this. You'll be getting promotion, promotion, promotion. He doesn't believe in changing job. Oh. He will stay there, he will retire there. If, if, even if they sack him, he will beg them to take him back. He doesn't know how to change. But the fire person, if they mess up with him, he will resign, tell him to go to hell. And Allah so good, he will get another job. God so good. Because of his, yes, because he's a firebrand. He will go to places you don't expect him to be. 
And by the time you get there, smile to them, tell them, I can do work for you now, nothing, nothing spoiled, I can work for you. Then they will just employ you wonder, how did you get another job? Say, ah, they, they are those ones, I was working with them and they were messing up my life. Now, in places of work, is there anything like that? Is there anything like uh, compatibility in the places of work? I want to advise those of you who employ labor. Observe the kind of people to, you bring to your jobs based on their natures. Somebody wants to do a job of uh, marketing. You now go and hire an art person to come and do marketing for you. Ah, you will not sell. You have killed that business. Yes, you killed that business. Also, for people you match together in the same office, if you don't want to be settling quarrel every time, observe them very well. Some people can never work together. Because a person of fire has dominance. A person of earth has the other side, Subs can be subservient sometimes, like to stay. If your boss is asked and you are fired, you will never agree. Because you will have good ideas to say, no, no, it's not done like that here. We don't, this is what, how we have been doing for the past 50 years. If you bring good ideas, he will just push it aside. If you bring good ideas, especially if you are also... If, uh, if, if you, you are somebody with vibrant um, nature, he will be jealous of you. And he will find ways of suppressing you, pressing you down, pressing you down. If you want to talk, they keep quiet. We are your bosses, we are the ones talking. So they can't work together. You see the subordinate behaving like the boss. In fact, some subordinates are better dressed than their bosses. They dress well, they appear nice, they appear everything, but as for the boss... Mr. Utility. <laughs> you just see the same table, the same chair. You see his desk like this, full of files, full of papers. Nobody needs again. Look at his office. You see cabinet that is sitting down like this. Cabinet that is bending to one side because of too many loads of things. Nobody even needs anymore. You see many of that in some of these ministry offices you go to. Forgive me, I'm mentioning their profession now. Some who work in certain type of ministries, they are earth people. Even if their fans are so dirty like this, they will not clean it. You see cobwebs in their offices, they will not touch it. The rug that's in their office, it will be there for 15 years. They will not change it. You know why? They will say, there's no money. Hey, the, the maintenance people have not released fund for us to change this. You see the type of AC they use those days when AC used to be like a cupboard. It's that same AC they see used. You put the do, then you see dust come out, dust and brimstone come out from the AC. That's the same time they see used. When you get to some office, you know that these people are earth people. But offices where they are fire brand, everything is pes pes. Everything is brand new. They would rather use their own money to fix an AC than for the AC to be there, not working. And if the worst get to the worst, they will not even stay in their office. If the office is not con conducive for their nature. So when you have office, either a private office owner or you work in public places, observe the people you work with. And some people will eat granite. In fact, from the name, ground nut. They are art people. Art person eat granite. If that person eats granite, you will see the granite uh, thing. He forgot it under his table for like two years. Because nobody sweeps under the table. You, you think I'm exaggerating? Because nobody sweeps the table. And you go and, go and check under your bed now, all of you, when you get back home. Check under your bed. When you see plenty of dust collected under your bed and some things have been there forgotten for over one year, you are an art person. So in places of work, if you are going to employ people, you may observe some of these things. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So complementarity or compatibility, they go a long way in most of the things we do in life that keeps us together to be one. But which of these can guarantee a fair compatibility and a lasting marriage? Let me give you some examples and ask you questions. You know, we are talking about people being compatible with each other. Arranged marriage. 
for people who did, they didn't choose by themselves. The marriage was arranged for them. Do you think they consider compatibility when they were arranging these marriages? Arranged marriage is different from forced marriage. Forced marriage is where the people don't have any choice in the matter. And you compel them to marry each other. Arranged marriage is where, okay, maybe for example, parents or guardians, they select. And then the individual is, um, is consulted. Okay, we have got so-and-so -so person for you. Will you like to marry him? Or would you like to marry her? If they bring down, you know that one, that is one system they use nowadays, right? I mean, in the olden days, perhaps. Nowadays, they still use it too. They select and they consult you. They ask you whether you want or you don't want, right? And then you choose, you accept, or you decline. There's another one. The individual will meet, husband and wife will meet, and they will bring themselves to the elderly people for their approval. Do you remember that type of system too? You, you, you follow the system. They have met somewhere. Now, the, the wife takes the husband or the husband takes the wife to go and show the parents and say, this is the person I want to marry. Then they will approve if they would. Sometimes they will disapprove and then they will have to go and change their minds, look for somebody else. Then we have the, um, the ones that the two of them will meet and they don't care for anybody's approval. And the first one is the first one I mentioned, where the people don't need their approval of the two couples, but they still force them to marry each other. These are four ways I've counted now, if you observe it well. Which of them was your own when you were getting married? So many years ago. See, I asked my mother this question before. I said, how did you and uh, Baba, how did the two of you even meet Seth? I won't tell you what she told me. <laughs> but you refused to tell me your own, and you didn't tell me. <laughs> Which of them guarantees compatibility? Which of them? You see each other, and then you take yourselves home to go and introduce, and they look at the two of you and they say, okay, go ahead. And marry. What, of, what if they had said, no, don't marry? Will you say I've married the person you married? Give that said no. You keep begging them. Oh, you try to convince them, try to blackmail them sometimes. You ask the reason why they refuse. If they say you people are not compatible, that's why. Okay, what's the measurement? Okay, he, he, let, let's say uh, your daughter brings a man now, right? And you don't like the guy, and you say no, no way. <laughs> On what ground? <laughs> okay, what are some of the grounds that you say okay, these people are compatible? One, he has plenty money. Physical. Hmm. Okay. Okay, genotype. Okay, you say they are not compatible based on their genotype. Okay, that's one one room for compatibility. I mean, another uh, I've mentioned them um, arranged marriage and compatibility. Sometimes people see what you don't see. So they object to it. Sometimes they know what you don't know. So they object to it. In fact, some of you uh, never thought you would marry the persons you married now because you didn't see anything compatible. If not that your parents say you must marry him, you must marry, you just marry him by force. Some of you married the men by force. Until after some years in the marriage, then you settled in and you feel, well, it's okay now. We are together. And some of you accept like that. Then you begin to see areas of compatibility that you can never see just by looking at each other like this. We also have matters of attraction and compatibility. Some people are only attracted to each other doesn't mean that they are compatible. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Let me give you an example. There's this thing we call propinquity effect. That is, the more we see and interact with somebody, the more we like the person. You understand? The more we likely, most likely begin to like that person. The more you see the person in your street, in your environment, in your area, the more you begin to develop likeness for the person.
There's the opposite of it. Sometimes, the more you see some people, the more you hate them. So sometimes it is just similar. Um, it's just um, what do they call it? Um, familiarity. Familiarity can make us to think that we are compatible. And then we also have enhancement or what we call packaging that can also enhance compatibility. That is the way a person dresses, the way a person appears, the way a person does their things, the way a person has the visual perception or the way the person is perceived. When a person takes care of themselves, they make themselves look nice. They can become compatible with somebody else who also likes to look nice. The art person doesn't care much about makeups or about fashion, but the fire person does, right? So if your husband is an art person and you are a fire person, you are ma- using makeups, putting all of this, like, he may not even see it. He doesn't see it. If you just played new hair, you just, it doesn't make any difference. In fact, it's a silver. How can you waste uh, three hours in the saloon? They are making, doesn't neck pain you. May Allah have mercy on us. Now, these are some of the things that compatibility comes with. But you know what you should do, even if you are married already? You should also strive for comfortability. Compatibility can work when we just marry. After some years, compatibility will remove. It will become comfortability. If not, people who are compatible before they marry, why would they divorce? There will not be divorce if compatibility is all we need. Comfortability means you feel comfy with each other. After some years, you grow to accommodate one another. After some years, let the water know how to control the fire. We begin to complement one another. If fire is burning, angry, the only person that can calm it down is water. Is water. We all need one another. We need each other. The water will not let you destroy yourself and destroy the whole house. But the philosopher, you know that's the water. When you are shouting and you are jumping up and down, you are to hell with everybody. The philosopher will not give you fire for fire. He can even keep quiet and be looking at you. Observing where your weak points are. Observing what you actually lack that's making you to shout. If a woman is shouting and saying, you are a useless man. There's nothing you have ever done for me. Since this year you have been married. Eh? You just useless. The man may not talk. Oh. He can even get his car key and drive away. And by the time he comes back, he will, for, he will pretend as if he didn't remember all of those things you were saying. You know, say, um, hey, there's this money I just collected now. It's about... Uh, 3.5 million naira. Uh, Umu, should I just keep it in your account in case you need some... <laughs> in, case, in case you want to buy something, let it be there. I don't need it now. Then the fire person that was burning, you know I told you they don't keep things much. She would just come down from her high throne and say, hey, is that not better? Instead of you to be making me to be angry every time. Is it not better? You see, you made me call you a useless man now. Thank you, Jerry, my darling. <laughs> it's only water that can control fire, isn't it? <laughs> so we, after some time, we become comfortable by controlling and keeping check on one another. Right? The air and the fire can also control each other if they are careful. Yes, the air and fire. If they are careful, they can find ways of controlling each other. Because the air will contain the fire, and the fire will contain the air. At the end of the day, you will not see the difference between them. If they can complement, if they can be comfortable with each other, things are going to be better for them. In getting comfortable in marriage, it can also be very dangerous to get too comfortable with each other. You know what I mean by comfortable now? That's uh, you feel free with each other. You can see anything you like without editing, right? You are comfortable with your husband. Your husband is comfortable with you. But don't get too comfortable. When you get too comfortable, the marriage starts having problems. Yes. When you start getting messy, you start messing up. 
Because your husband doesn't talk, he doesn't talk. You have turned him to something else. Because he's very calm and gentle, you have abused that gentility. That's what I mean. You got too comfortable. You will not complain, you will not talk, you do anything you like, but you don't dress up to please him anymore. Your husband may be an ass person. He doesn't like changing wives, he doesn't have, like having many wives. Right? He's a very caring person, very loving person, and he loves you the way you are. He has accepted you. There's nothing you do that your husband will quarrel because you have spent years together and he has accepted you like that. But after a while, you start getting messy. You not dress up well for him. You start gaining weight just because you had three children. <laughs> now you don't watch your weight anymore. You don't speak calmly anymore. You are abusing friends of his friends. Sometimes you crack some jokes that are insulting because he will not talk. Sometimes you don't know Allah Akbar. Some of you even announce to your husband that you are going to the toilet. Yes, because you are too comfortable. You say, Abu, I'm coming home. I want to go and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who talks to the husband like that? How should a lady say it now? How should a lady? You say, excuse me, I want to... I want to ease myself, okay. Or excuse me just a moment. We're not even saying it. In presence of his friend. <laughs> Abu, I'm coming. I want to go and shit. <laughs> ah, you got too comfortable. Too comfortable. How can you say something like that to your husband? And some women I know, they'll be changing their pad in the presence of their husband. Yes, I, I've, I've had a man complain like that before. That's C finish. Don't you have any dignity left? Well, you, have, you have become too comfortable. That's what I mean. Because he doesn't talk, he doesn't complain, you'll be changing your things in his presence. Your uh, underwear, everything, you will throw them anywhere in the room. Your husband is not supposed to be seeing your underwear every time. He doesn't, it's not sexually appealing for a man to see a stained underwear. And sometimes you don't get his food ready on time because you know he, he doesn't have any choice. You still have to accept. A man has gone to work from morning, he's coming back in the evening to come and relax and eat. Is then you now say, ah, sorry, we didn't even know you come so early like this. So should I cook beans? <laughs> Somebody that is hungry. It is because you have got too comfortable that you don't know exactly what he likes at any point in time. You must know. It's your job. Don't get too comfortable now, sisters. Don't get too comfortable with your husband. Because he doesn't complain, you starve him. Because he doesn't complain, when he says, oh yeah, let us, let us sleep in the bed, you say you are tired, you have a headache. And you will not take care of the bedroom, you will not smell nice. And some of you will start smelling kerosene. When your husband comes back, you just emerge from the kitchen as if that's where you were born. As if they planted your placenta there. You will stay there in the kitchen. The husband will be in the, in the parlor. You'll be watching TV. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to discuss with. And you'll be there in the kitchen. When you finish from the kitchen, you go to the bathroom and start washing. They swear for you that you cannot sit down with your husband. Uh -huh. uh -uh. So don't get too comfortable because... Nobody to help Nobody to help. Nobody do help do housework. It is, this is where we, ah, uh, my sister, look, let me tell you, this is where we take each other for granted. Men also take their wives for granted too. He, he will come back from work with files like this from the office. He will staple himself to the dining table with his laptop. That's where he will remain. Abu, he will say, don't disturb me now, you know I'm busy. He was busy in the office, he will come back home and become, you people don't like it too now. You don't like it that you want to discuss with your husband is always on phone. You are discussing something, he's chatting with somebody on telephone. Or you, are, you want to discuss something very important, he wants to use on Facebook. He's following some nonentities on Twitter. Who likes that kind of a thing? We get too comfortable with each other because we think we are compatible. Compatibility will not work again when we get too comfortable by taking each other for granted. Most women now, they have their best friends outside the marriage, not inside the marriage. I told you the other time, now, is your husband not supposed to be your best friend, your best confidant? If something is disturbing your mind, is it not your husband you should discuss with? But he's not there. He will not make himself available because he has gotten too comfortable. You don't complain. You don't ask for money because you know he doesn't have. Because of that one, when money comes, he doesn't remember you. 
How many men who say they bought underwear for their wives in the last... They say, no, 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 she should buy that by herself. Where is it written in Hadith that it is haram for a man to surprise his wife once in a while? And say, I bought this one for you. Even if he is buying this one, let him exaggerate. Buy a very big one and say, well, if you say, but this is too big for me, say, that's what I see. <laughs> if it is tangerine, let it be the size of watermelon you buy. But what I'm saying is, don't get too comfortable in marriage. Many of us will have become too comfortable. Please, let us try. So many people do that one. You see some couples, now after many years of marriage, they are still shy of one another. They still speak softly to each other. They still speak with respect to one another. The wife still serves her husband food by herself, even if she didn't cook it. And I know of some men who don't feel comfortable eating food outside. They would rather come home and eat your own that, that tastes like, like battery acid. <laughs> Even if your soup tastes like sawdust, they will still come home and eat it. But you, that you know that your husband cannot eat outside, he will always come home. Why don't you give him good food? Feed him well. It's not every time it's the house help that will be doing everything for your husband now. And most, in most homes now, I heard of one like that. The house help is so good to the extent that when the man comes back from work, the house help only needs to look at his face to know whether he's tired or not. If the man is tired, she knows the type of tea she will bring. If the man is tired and he wants to see his journey like that, she will bring beverage for him. But if the man, man is very energetic, he's carrying his office bag, she will bring lifting for him. As for the wife herself, she doesn't even know the difference. The house help can sense that this, this male guy is very busy. The house help will carry the children to the parlor, go and be watching Tom and Jerry with them, or take them to somewhere and keep them busy so that he can concentrate. But you, the wife, you don't know the difference. It's when the man is busy, say, oh yeah, oh yeah, Adam, go and play with daddy. Daddy has come. Uh, Fatima, Fati. Daddy has come, oh, go and greet daddy. And children will come, they will be disturbing him, they will be bothering him. The man doesn't like going out, he will stay, he can't do his work, he can't relax, he can't eat, he can't sleep, he can't even watch TV. Because you will pack the children to come and be disturbing him. You don't have any sense that this man is tired. He wants some time for himself. When some men cannot help it again, he will just carry his bag and go outside, go back to the office. He will do everything he has during the office before coming back home, 10 p.m. He knows now that, yes, I can come home, anything can happen. And when he comes, the first thing you confront him is some bad news. Ah, Abu, where have you been since? Did you hear what happened? Bad news. Things that he doesn't even want to hear. Gossip. Things that do not improve anything in his life. Things that do not contribute anything to his livelihood. You don't even know how to read mood to know that, ah, this man. To even ask him about his work, about your office. I hope you did your best. Oh, may Allah assist you. You want me to give you some time to do some work? He can say, I don't even want to do any work again. Come and sit down with me. That's a good wife who understands. And the husband too understands that, okay, I know you are trying to give me space, but what's the use? Come, come, let's sit down and talk. His mind will now become at rest. But if he knows that once he comes, it is some complaint that's none of his business. Uh, you see that my cousin's elder sister's younger brother, a friend to that one's cousin is going to get married and they have taken a show. Is that the one he wants to hear? Someone who is thinking of paying school fees. So we get too comfortable. That's what I mean. All of the compatibility you thought you had, it is this carelessness, taking each other for granted that makes it to disappear. You that was a caring wife, you now become a pain in his neck. At the end of the day, he will just leave you alone and face another life. Other girls outside are the ones who will ask him about his life. Ah, this cool feels thing, so, uncle, have you been able to set it? I'm still there. May Allah provide for you. It is, his, uh, you know, that's what they call them, isn't it? Uncle. Is anybody calling your husband uncle there? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody call your husband uncle? They will call him uncle because they care about him. Let, let, let me give you another example of you getting too comfortable. Let, let me see. I'm, I'm addressing you, ladies, now. Because you people are the ones who get too comfortable. 
your husband doesn't come home on time. There's a particular time he normally comes. He didn't come back. Now he came back about five hours late. Instead of you to say, ah, welcome, oh, I've been worried about you. I hope everything was all right. You say, eh, what, what kind of, when did you begin all of this waka waka? All your mates close since I've called Baba Mulika, I've called Baba Usman. They have all in there. Where, where, where have you been? What, what, what? This man will say, hear me. Where, 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 that's how you people move about anyhow. You are supposed to have arrived in this house since 6 p.m. Now it is 11 o'clock, you are just coming. And you see her vibrating. Vibrating. Why are you just coming now? Where are you coming from? I know of a woman who will say, the other should not pray Isha. Don't pray, don't pray that Isha. Don't go and baffle. Pray Isha first. The man will say, I want to go and shower. No, 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 no. Don't shower. She just stand by the... She, she stand... <laughs> <laughs> she stand by the by the bathroom. No, no, no don't enter. Go and pray that Isha first. Go, go, go. Then you see them struggling, struggling the door. Ah, ah. It is that kind of attitude that will make the man want to bath. But why are you suspecting his bathroom? The man is tired. He wants to shower and relax. But you know he's not in all <laughs> you this woman, I don't know what we are thinking. Of. He's not in all cases now. Sometimes you, you you know, okay, what if his car got spoiled here on the way? Now nah? does it stop you from praying? Ah, uh, he's not in all situations that people are able to phone. Then he has to be understanding too. We must be understanding. That's what makes compatibility to work. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> she was saying, no, no, don't, don't back. We'll go and pray Isha first. It is that kind of attitude. Okay, now look at it now. A man that knows that when I get home now, my wife doesn't even care what happened to me. She doesn't care how my day, day was going. She will not text or even say, ah, Salam alaikum Abu, how is your day? I hope you found time to eat. She doesn't bother what is happening in your life. Such a woman, you are not in a hurry to go home to meet her. And sometimes when you get home, you know it's some troubles you meet. There's no good news that she has. She doesn't know how to cheer you up. She doesn't know how to make you happy. She doesn't even know how to make you relax. For such a man, it's a matter of time. Any woman that can give him those things that he lacks, even if that woman is, is, is so low to him. Don't you see why we like people who care for us? It's natural. We like people who care about us. We like people who ask about us. We like someone that will call and say, Salam alaikum, I just say, let me ask after you. Why is it that we, husband and wife, we, we don't do that to each other? It's when we see, we see. When we don't see, we don't care. And when we, we expect each other back and we don't see each other, instead of to be lenient, we turn into quarrel. Ah, Abba, no. Marriage has its own respect, has its own norms, has its own regards. No matter how compatible we are, if we are too comfortable, it will not work. Things will be going wrong and we will not know where it came from. Men who don't dress well. He will just put everything together. He will be looking as if he helped people to chase goat. Everything is so, so mixed up. And you don't earn any respect with your wife because you shout on her. Men will shout on their wives. Their, their wives don't respect them anymore. They know that the highest you do is to shout. Men who cannot bring themselves low and call their wives once in a while and say, is there anything bothering your mind? You look so sad. You look so worried. Is there anything you need? Is there anything you want me to do for you? Once he knows that it is not going to end up with money, you know that's another thing. If we know that it's all money, 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 we will not call you again when we are broke. But if you know, if it's companionship, if it is, um, what do they call this thing? Is it companionship they call it? When you just need to just talk. When you have bad mood, you just need somebody to make it light for you. When we can do these things together, it is then that compatibility makes sense. And when we get comfortable, we should not be too comfortable with each other. The Quran says, You are a garment for your wives, and your wives are a garment for you. 
A garment is something that you feel comfy in. If there is heat, it will not stifle you. If there is cold, it will cover you. And if you wear it, it, it is very smooth on your skin. Not a cloth you wear and it will look like some paper on your skin. Is that not what we are supposed to be for each other? We are supposed to keep each other comfortable but not too comfortable. Now I've mentioned some aspects of this comfortability now. Even when it comes to husband and wife doing what husband and wife do in the bedroom. Woman, a woman should make her bedroom look like a paradise for the man. A place where once he enters, he doesn't want to go out again. But as for some of you, the man will come, he doesn't, he will say, what is it that is smearing my body? Ah, sorry, uh, Abu, it's the children that came to eat two in the bedroom. They put two on the bed. And why don't you clean? Say, hey, where do I have time? I know I'm very busy too. He now says, ah, but this bed sheet is, is dirty. Now, hey, let's leave it like that, Jare. Where, where do I have time for that? Ah, ah. No, you are getting too comfortable. I hope you understand what I mean. I mentioned the other time some of you were laughing that even the, the plate you use in serving your husband, don't get too comfortable about it. So long as you are not an ass woman. An ass woman is one that will use one plate for 15 years. You say, ah, that plate lasts, so it didn't even break. That, <laughs> that's one who carry breakables up and down. They will not give their husband something to drink in a glass cup. They will say because children will break it. And who say children shouldn't break glass? Teach them to break glass now, so that next time they will know that the glasses are not to be broken. The way we serve each other, the way we regard each other. Let the man also wake up one day and go and buy a nice dress for his wife, even without her asking. Because this woman will not complain about salad clothes, many of you, you don't buy anything for them again. Say, after all, you are working. Is that not what some of you say? Say, after all, you are working now. What, why do I have to buy clothes for you again? Yes, may Allah make it easy for us. Now, let me ramp it up now, inshallah. Upon all of this comfortability we are talking about, we still need each other. In terms of, in the time of sweetness, in the times of bitterness, in the times of happiness, in the times of sorrow. Will this same man still be there? This one that you say you are comfortable. Will he still be there when the doctor says, sorry, we have done all we can do. Your wife may not live long. Will this wife still be there when the landlord comes to embarrass him in your presence. We know of so many women who keep money. Their husbands are in debt, hiding from here and there, but they don't have that compassion to see how they can help him out of his trouble. They have left him to suffer all alone. Can we go through the suffering of marriages together? However compatible we were in the beginning, that compatibility will not work again when we cannot suffer with each other, when we cannot endure with each other, when we are feeling sad and we cannot make each other happy, when our hearts are filled up with too much worries and we cannot remove that worries from each other. To hell with compatibility then, if we cannot be there for each other at the time we need each other. When the whole world turns upside down, will this man still stand by you? When your child goes to school and they say they are looking for your child, they don't know where your baby has gone to. Will this man still be there to stand by you to look for this child or he be there to be accusing you and cursing you? The day your child is sick and you take the child to the hospital, will your husband ever think it is worthy for him to take permission from office to come and stand by you in the hospital and say, let me support you so that it's not only you that will look after this baby. When you are sick, and nobody to stay with you in the hospital. Your husband that you say is compatible. Can he leave his job to come and stay with you and keep you company on your little bed? Or he will spend some, send someone to come and stay with you? Is it only the sweet part of you that you want to enjoy? What of when the other side comes? Compatibility and comfortability will not work again if we cannot keep hope alive at all circumstances. If the wife cannot say, my husband, I know you are trying, I know you are broke, I know you don't have money. We will manage whatever thing you give to us. We will pray for you. Allah will bless you. Allah will help you. Or sit the woman that will come and hold the husband's money and say, you will either kill me today or you give me the money. All this compatibility thing we talk about.
they don't make any sense if we don't have a partner that can suffer well with us somebody who can make our griefs to be removed somebody who can make our pains and sorrows to be removed or to be alleviated somebody who understands our hurts and who can fill it up with sweet words of encouragement and of happiness one of the great guarantees of life is that every person every couple will suffer one way or the other when you are choosing a mate or if you are married already be ready to suffer with one another suffering is not only when money is not there it can also be anything can happen children can be sick Mela protect our children for us a child can die it has happened before a relative can die an accident can happen are we ready to be there for each other or not so let us not oversimplify or over glorify compatibility compatibility is only working at the point of marriage after many years it becomes comfortability and when we become comfortable with each other like i want do not let us be too comfortable with each other marriage is an uncompleted building the couples will have to continue to build it forever till you die you can never finish building marriage so whichever one of these elements that you have in your life understand your own very well and understand your husband very well in fact some of your husbands are, are a mixture of the whole of all of all of the four but observe him very well know which one is akin to him which one is his own and see how you can work hand in hand with one another your husband may be someone who doesn't talk and you talk a lot once in a while you say shut up please keep quiet and once in a while if you see him quiet he doesn't want to talk don't bore him with your talk hey, hey you started didn't they tell us in the lecture today that a man should listen to the wife it's not every time a man wants to listen give him his space let him relax keep the children busy lock them up in the parlor let them be watching tom and jerry and spend some time alone with your husband if you want to if he doesn't want you allow him to be the same thing with the other party too it's not every time you keep secret because we are water now you keep too many things too many things too many things you keep uh, doing like this doing like this sometimes once they come out straight men cannot read minds you can't say you mean we have been married for the past 20 years you don't know what i'm thinking how is this supposed to know what you are thinking tell him now what is bothering you instead of looking melancholic i see somebody die every time you, you squeeze face like monkey that suck lime just scatter your face anyhow i see you ate cockroach it's not every time you squeeze face once in a while even if you are going to use cello tape to put your smile like this put your smile smile at him let him be happy bring him out of his mood to say that you are the earth person doesn't mean that you should take shit every time don't allow yourself to be pushed to the limit before you react if there's something you don't want please talk say that you don't want it instead of allowing things to pile up pile up until one day you now explode the whole house will catch fire and then the whole marriage will pack up don't wait till then then if you are the air you like going up and down air should help water air should help fire and air should help the earth too let air learn to settle down once in a while i'm saying this because of most of the men who don't like to stay at home they don't stay in one place say it's my business my business my business my business after all your business what you make all the money are you not coming back to this same house my business my business your children are growing up they don't even know you and so many of the men there if you get home ask your husband the birthdays of each of the children they don't remember he doesn't even stay with them he doesn't know whether they do homework he doesn't know some men think it's haram to attend pta because he's always busy no if you are made of air try and calm down once in a while you two stay you don't you see how the air obey the organizer when they put you somewhere you two should stay there for a while instead of looking for space to escape mail and make it easy for us now i hope you have all um, understood this uh, what do we call it these things that were put together uh, all of these elements and the rest of them some of them are theories you don't ask me to bring proof for them but we are just using them as examples for us to see how people behave and how people can be compatible how people can be comfortable and how not to feel too comfortable 
so that compatibility can make sense. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.